Hello and welcome to In Good Health with McLaren Macomb. I am your host, Aliyah Flores, and in today's show, we'll head out to visit Chef Pete Loren, and he will be showing us some recipes that will help lighten some of our favorite holiday dishes. And a little later, we'll be joined by Lorraine Cusimano, Director of Cardiovascular Services at McLaren Macomb, who will be giving us some great tips on how to better manage our holiday stress. But first, we're here joined by Dr. Erin Baker, primary care physician with McLaren Macomb, and she will be telling us how to keep those pounds off during the holiday season. And Dr. Baker, can you share with us just a little bit about yourself and your background? Absolutely. I uh, studied medicine at Michigan State University, nice. went on to my internship at uh, POH Regional Medical Center, and then finished out my residency at McLaren Oakland Regional Medical Center, and now I'm at McLaren Macomb. Nice. Well, welcome. Uh, during the holiday season, Dr. Baker, many of us find ourselves attending parties and family gatherings, and most of these gatherings, they have rich foods and desserts. Can you share with us any strategies on avoiding weight gain during these holidays? <laughs> Absolutely, and it's going to be the thing that everyone's heard over and over again, which is moderation, everything in moderation, okay. looking at portion control, how much are you eating, don't go for that second plate, things we know inherently, but there's little small things you can do where if you're going to be socializing, don't socialize near the buffet line or don't be standing around the hors d'oeuvres because you'll find yourself just picking stuff up mm -hmm. without even thinking about it. Don't take leftovers home with you because there's, at the end of the night, there's lots of food left over. Mm -hmm. People, you know, hey, take some home. If it's home, you're going to eat it. You've already had your treat. You don't need it at home to be tempting you later. And you mentioned portion control. Mm -hmm. Can you just share with us what that might look like in a on a plate? Sure. Before, before so most of the time, you're going to want to have half of your plate be some form of vegetable, and then you've got your carbs and your meat. If you're okay. just kind of strolling through a buffet line, a meat portion would be something like the palm of your hand. Okay. If you're looking at fruits and vegetables, be more like a cup. And okay. if you're going to add butter, that type of thing, obviously you try not to, but that's going to be about like a dice. A and dice you, size. And, yeah, a dice size. Just one dice? One dice. One that's, dice. That's oh, it. That's okay. one serving. Okay. Um, and people always ask, well, don't people have bigger palms? But mm -hmm. then that usually means they're a bigger person so that they can mm -hmm. have a little bit more. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, you know, also we've talked a little bit about foods and portion size. What about the, uh, the drinks that we have at the family gatherings? When you're looking at um, alcoholic beverages and there might be a lot to choose from there, how do we not gain weight? Uh, when we're looking at uh, consumption of alcohol during the holidays? Again, that's something that you do in moderation. You can make better choices, like say if you want to have the light beer instead of the dark, heavy craft beer that everyone likes to drink now. Um, the eggnog is going to have a lot more calories in it than say maybe your glass of wine. Okay. So you can make smart choices as to which you are going to drink, mm -hmm. and then safe drinking is considered one drink for a woman, two drinks for a man. So if you stick with that, oh. you're usually pretty safe. And that's okay. 12 ounces, so a beer, a glass of wine, or a shot of liquor is what would be considered one serving size. I understand. Okay, that's perfect. That was great advice as well. Uh, so with eating rich foods, without gaining sudden weight during this time An frame. easy way to do it would be to up your game in the exercise. So mm -hmm. if you're only exercising two to three times a week, you know that you've got these holidays coming up, you might want to kick that up to maybe four to five times a week. Oh, it's okay. also a great time to switch up your routine. Many people come into the office, I'm dieting, I'm exercising, I'm not losing any weight, what am I doing wrong? They're probably going to the gym or they have the treadmill at home and they mm -hmm. get on that and do the exact same thing every time, 30 minutes, walk at this pace. Try increasing the incline, increasing the resistance on an elliptical, adding weight training, okay. trying a completely different machine. Um, that will help you kind of break through that plateau. So I would say that's one way to do it. You got your portion size, you want your moderation. If you splurge, just work a little bit extra to work it off. Okay, okay. And it, as you're exercise, exercising, you might see a commercial that comes across the television during the holidays uh, for quick weight loss solutions. Uh, it may be tempting for a lot of us to just run right out there and buy whatever that solution might, that quick fix might mm -hmm. be at the time. So what could, we, what could you share uh, about the drugs that are advertised on television? I would love to say that there's a drug you could take that would 
you know, it's going to melt away the weight while mm. you sit on the couch and watch TV. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. Oh, and yeah. the one thing to remember about these medications, they're not FDA approved. So they do not have to prove that they work and they do not have to prove that they're safe. And I see there's a lot of stimulants. I also see people coming in with high blood pressure, with mm. their heart rate up. So they're putting a lot of stress on their heart. The nice, natural, boring way is just diet, exercise, and keeping it consistent. And you want to make small changes mm -hmm. because if you make large changes, everyone makes the New Year's res resolution, I'm going to work out every day, I'm going to eat 1,000 calories a day, and usually within a month or two they crack. You actually have to just add maybe if you've never exercised, maybe start one day and then slowly build up on that. Maybe cut back 100 calories a day instead of trying to cut back 500. You want something that's going to be part of your lifestyle, not per se, a diet, an exercise program, but nope, that's just what I do, uh, you know, anyways. So when patients come into your office, you could also suggest certain uh, weight loss plans for them Absolutely. as well? Absolutely, yep. Okay. Usually I'll calculate out, you know, depending on their um, age, height, weight, and then what their activity level is, we'll calculate out exactly how many calories they need just to maintain what they have, mm -hmm. and then we try to figure out. Usually if you can drop it by about 500, you'll lose about a pound a week. And that's okay. healthy weight loss. One drop to your two calories by yep. 500, okay. One to two pounds a week. You okay. don't, these things that you see on TV where I lost 40 pounds in 40 days, it's just, it's not healthy and it's not sustainable. And most people will lose that weight and then mm -hmm. gain it back and then we start on the yo-yo cycle. So it's easier just to take it down into something that's manageable. And usually I like to do a mix of diet and exercise. So if you cut back by 250 calories, work out 250 calories, then balance. that's a little bit of a balance because going down like some people, if you want to eat 1,100 calories mm -hmm. a day, that's pretty darn hard to do. Yes, I've tried it myself. Yes. <laughs> How do you keep those patients compliant on those weight loss programs that you have or their plans? Um, usually I keep, I, I bring them in once a month and we kind of work on it. Uh, it just depends on how motivated the patient is. Because okay. no matter how much I tell them, you got to really have the motivation yourself to want to be able to do it. Um, I really am a big uh, proponent of calorie counting, and especially in the beginning. I know mm -hmm. it's it's a pain, but it's that you can try and make healthy choices all day and you could still end up over the calories. So even though you think you did all these things right, why am I not losing weight? Well, maybe that was 2,700 calories, even though you're making all the right choices and you need to be eating more like 1,700. Oh, okay. So a lot of people will make those healthy choices, but they're still not looking at portion size and mm -hmm. actual calorie amounts. So does it help if your patients have a, um, a diary? Absolutely. A daily yep. diary of what they're writing Usually down? I have them. It's so nice with our smartphones now. There's a million oh. apps out there. So okay. usually I'll have them track it in an app, and then the app will even track your macronutrients because how much fat mm. versus carbs versus protein you get oh, wow. is important as well. Okay. And to calculate that all out yourself is, is uh, you know, very difficult to do. So usually I have them do that and keep an exercise log. And then if they do stall and they're doing everything right, I can go through and pick out okay, this is what we can change. This is what we have to change with your exercise routine. Okay. So that kind of helps because usually you'll lose weight in the beginning, then yes, mm -hmm. you're stuck. And like getting through that stuck point is really where I try to help people. I found myself plateauing as well. Absolutely, so happens all the time. Absolutely, and that's great advice. Uh, so as a primary care physician here in uh, Macomb County, is there any other advice you can give our viewers regarding maintaining a healthy weight as well as um, being successful during the hardest time of the year, during the holidays? I would say that the, the most important is kind of how you gauge success. So act, set actual realistic goals. Don't go to that Christmas party saying, I'm going to eat nothing but celery sticks. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of got to say like, all right, maybe I am going to indulge a little more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set a goal of working, you know, exercising or working out one more day a week than I am right now. Or I'm going to add weight training, you know, once a week, something like that. Something that is attainable. And then once you hit that, you can build on top of it. So I'll add another time. Or instead of 30 minutes, I'm going to go 40 minutes. It doesn't have to be. If you make these big sweeping changes, you're never going to stick to them. So it definitely sounds like weight loss is a lifestyle change that we need to make. I always say it took a while to put it on. It takes a while to get it off. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm sure a lot of your, view your viewers will appreciate that advice. And we appreciate you coming in and speaking with us today. Um, have a great rest of the day, and we'll be seeing you soon. To learn more about ways to manage holiday weight, visit mclaren.org slash Macomb blog.
Hi, I'm Chef Pete Lauren, and welcome to My Kitchen in Good Health with McLaren McComb. From Thanksgiving to New Year's, it seems we're constantly going to dinners, parties, or maybe even hosting one of our own. All the while eating all of those heavy and sweet dishes that we just know sooner or later are going to catch up with us. Today, we'll be showing you some very easy things you can do right in your own kitchen to help lighten up some of those holiday favorites. Let's start with one of my favorites. My first tip is to avoid the fat altogether. How? Well, I use reductions and chopped vegetables. Sounds simple, huh? It is. Here's what you can do. Now, I have here a rotisserie chicken, the one you can buy in every grocery store, and I've taken the bones off of the meat, okay? So I have here one full chicken's worth of bones. Now, this could also be done with a turkey. And I've added the bones and all that gelatin you get in the bottom right to my pot, and I'm gonna add a quarter to a water. Now, you're gonna cook this for a few hours. If you want to, you can also add some vegetables. I have some celery, carrots, and onions here. And we're going to put this on the stove and turn it on to a simmer here. And we're going to let that cook for an hour or two on very, very slow simmer and then strain it. After we strain it, I'm going to reduce it a little bit more. And what you're going to have is this. This is a beautiful, you can even see it has some body here now. It's a beautiful reduction. It just smells just like liquid chicken. It's so good. Now, how to thicken it? Well, you can just use it as what we call a jus right now, or you can thicken it not with a roux, with butter and flour. You don't want to do that. You can use right now arrowroot. Arrowroot is actually a gluten-free product, and it's the same as cornstarch, but I like it just a little bit better. I'm going to take, just mix a little bit of water in here. If you want to have your gravy a little bit lighter in color, you can use milk. And I'm going to add just a little bit here, and you can see already it's thickening up now. So I've got a nice thickened gravy that just is so great. A little salt and pepper you can add to that. Here's a great recipe to try. I have here about three pounds of sweet potatoes in here, or yams, and we've cut them into about one, one and a half inch dice. That's all I gotta do to start with. And you're gonna cut these into approximately one inch pieces. And we're gonna add approximately one to two tablespoons of brown sugar. That's up to you. One is, you can get away with two, you know, whatever you wanna do, sneak a little extra in. Then you're just gonna use a little bit of oil, enough to create a glaze. And this glaze is going to really make it look kind of a nice and caramelized in candies. Last, we're gonna add some black pepper here and some salt. Stir this all up, make sure it all stays in the bowl. Toss it so you get a nice even coating here. And I have in front of me a glass casserole dish. And you can use a sheet pan if you like, but I'd recommend you use one that's non-stick, okay? So we've got this coated pretty well. We're going to put all of these into our roasting pan. And I've got my oven preset at about 400 degrees, just like this. We're going to place these in here. And we're going to stir these ever so often. It's going to take approximately 35 to 45 minutes in a 375 to 400 degree oven. And I've got some right now I want to show you. So I'm just going to place these in and pull out my ones that have been roasting. And this is exactly what they look like. Now you can see here we've got a little bit of caramelization. We don't have all that extra sauce and they are just fork tender. Beautiful way to have sweet potatoes for your family. We're going to make a pumpkin pie now that's not really a pumpkin pie at all. It's a pumpkin custard. And it won't have the crust, which you don't need to have, and it's going to have a little bit less fat. So we're going to start by taking two cups or a 15-ounce can of regular canned pumpkin. Now, you don't want to use the pumpkin pie mix. It already has stuff in it. We're just going to use the canned pumpkin. So we've got that here. Next, not much sugar. Okay, we have here about um, between half and three quarters of a cup. That's not a lot for a pumpkin pie. We're going to add about two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Now, if you don't want to use pumpkin pie spice, you can use one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of clove, and another half teaspoon of ginger. It does the same thing. We're going to dump that in. And lastly, because it's a custard, you need eggs, right? So we're going to put in two whole extra large eggs, just like this. Now, we're going to save a couple of steps here because we've got all of this stuff right now together, and we're going to mix this until it's well blended. So instead of using cream or milk, which has fat in it, we're going to use a no-fat evaporated milk right there. So you can find this in most supermarkets, and we're going to add this in 
in stages, kind of just drizzle it in until it's well blended. And that's it. It's a pretty simple recipe. Now, of course, you're going to put it into some kind of a custard cup, right? And this will make approximately eight six ounce portions. So a little pour here. I've got one of my large measurement cups. And now we're going to fill our cavities here. Um, this is wonderful here. You could even take this particular dish and after it's made into a custard, if you want to do a brulee, you can put some granulated sugar over the top of it once it's baked, and you can actually brown it with a blowtorch or put it back under your broiler. It's really beautiful. Nice, nice finish to that. Here's one here that's oval. This is your traditional size right here. This is approximately six ounces, and this would make eight of these. All right, so before we bake this, we want to put a little bit of water in here. So this will create some steam so that we won't have this burn on top or cook unevenly. I'm gonna put, oh, about an eighth of an inch of water in the bottom of this pan, something between an eighth and a quarter. And we're gonna put this into a 325 degree oven. Uh, it can go a little higher or a little lower. It's all up to you. 325 is in that medium rare, rare area. And we're gonna put this right into the oven right now. And I'll take one out a little later and show what it came out like. Oh, they look delicious. Wish you could smell them again. So these look great. They're nice and firm. I've tested them. You'll sometimes see a little separation around the edge that tells you they're done. Or you can also put a toothpick inside and then you can just check for doneness, just like you would a cake. So I'm going to set these aside. And these are again the six ounce version right here. And these were a couple I made even earlier than that. So they're nice and firm. And I'm going to put a little garnishment on top. We're going to use a fat free whip topping. And you can find this in all the grocery stores. Give it a good shake and put a nice little dollop. You don't have to feel guilty about it whatsoever because you don't have any fat in it. And I like to put a little ginger snap on top. It's kind of holiday-ish, and that will finish the decoration. Isn't that beautiful? Your guests are going to love this. I hope you enjoyed these delicious recipes and tips, and I invite you to stop back in again soon. Until then, I'm Chef Pete Lauren, Director of Culinary Development for Nino Savaggio International Marketplace for In Good Health with McLaren McComb. And here's to your good health. This is so good. To view these recipes and more, visit mclaren.org slash McCombblog. Today we have Lorraine Cusimano, Director of Cardiovascular Services at McLaren Macomb. Well, first I'd like to say thank you for inviting me. Um, I've been a nurse for over 35 years and mostly in cardiology. And one of my passions is talking to people about heart health, making choices that they can make because life is very short. And if they can make a few tweaks in their life, why wouldn't they want to do that? So I wanted to take time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. The holidays can be heartwarming and stressful at the same time. They can also be very busy and emotional leading to much added stress. If not managed well, how can stress affect your health long term? So holidays are a joyous time, time for families to get together. They have a lot of memories, a um, lot of positive emotions, but there's also a lot of, there can be a lot of negative emotions because sometimes we put so much stress on ourselves mm -hmm. to be, to find the perfect gift. To, f to do the perfect baking, to have the social gatherings, um, it's, it, it creates um, unnecessary stress, especially for women. Women, um, oftentimes, we work outside the house these days. Mm -hmm. So in addition to all the holiday stress, in a very condensed period of time, mm -hmm. we also have deadlines at work that we have to Absolutely. achieve by the end of the year. So it's really important that we kind of recognize that and kind of give us um, an opportunity to say no on some things. The effects of stress on the body, short term and long term, are pretty incredible. Okay. So in the years past, we suspected stress had a negative effect on the body, but we didn't know. Okay. So then we did research, and then we found that negative stress affects every system in the body. So I'd like to talk a little later about the heart, effects with the heart, okay. but for the whole body, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Um, all the cells in our body talk. And so when they're talking and thinking happy things, mm -hmm. life is good. Endorphins are created. We have glows. We're happy. We're sleeping. 
when our bodies are talking negatively, anxiety, stress, depression, depression can come from feeling like we didn't succeed with getting everything we wanted to do, we feel like a failure, then those cells talk negatively and they affect the whole body. Okay. And if you have a chronic disease, it just exacerbates it. So, so with that being said, are there certain chronic conditions, chronic health conditions, that could be significantly affected by adding more stress? For example, the skin. It can affect uh, psoriasis, uh, shingles. Uh, if for digestive um, issues, it can cause more problems with irritable bowel or Crohn's. Mm -hmm. If you have um, arthritis, um, stress, the negative stress causes uh, cortisol to increase in your body, okay. and it's, it can make more belly fat. Um, it makes your blood pressure go up, your heart rate go up. Um, it's just, it can make your, ex your arthritis exacerbate. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty significant. There's not a part in your body that stress doesn't affect. What other type of symptoms do you see? Um, high, high blood pressure? Yeah. Um, so the cortisol, the cortisol is like a, it's like a, a fight or flight kind of thing. So when it gets elevated in your body, it can, it makes, it can make your blood pressure go up. Okay. It can make your heart rate go up. It can make your heart rate irregular, which is pretty significant. Um, it can cause insomnia, which is huge. That's another huge thing we're looking at is sleep. We now know that we need to get at least six hours of sleep a day. So in, um, the stress can cause insomnia, which is a whole nother spiral down if you don't get enough sleep, if you don't take care of yourself. So I would say that too. Okay. So specifically, Lorraine, how does the long-term stress affect your heart and your health? So, um, so with the heart, the heart rate, the blood pressure, the depression that comes with it, we know that people that are depressed, for example, mm -hmm. have, I think, a 35 or 40% increase in heart attacks. So, and then, you know, we go back to what I was saying about inflammation. Mm -hmm. So the stress if, in your arteries, if you have a smooth inside of your arteries, the blood goes through the artery, smooth, everything is cool. When stress builds up, it can cause inflammation inside your artery, and that's where your blood goes. And so that inflammation causes snags, and then plaque can build up, and it makes like, it's called, I don't want to get too technical, but a soft plaque, and then it can break loose, and that's how you have a heart attack. So there's a lot of increased heart attacks and stress with, um, with the effects of stress on the body. So Lorraine, are there signs that we see in our loved ones that might indicate that they're a little too stressed out? Absolutely. So like I, in, so with the holiday season, short amount of time, all these expectations we put on ourselves, sometimes our family members put them on us, but a lot of times we put them on ourselves. Absolutely. Us women do that. We, we want to do it all. Absolutely. And we just can't do it all. So we set ourselves up for failure. Then when we fail, then we go into depression, the stress and all that. So for, for ourselves, we need to recognize the stress mm -hmm. and know what causes it and be realistic, scale things down. If you're talking about recognizing a loved one, mm -hmm. that's to us. So where you can call them out, you can say, hey, Elise, you know, you look really stressed lately. Is there anything I can do to help? You know, the telltale signs would be more irritability. You're, you might see them in ability, um, not able to concentrate. Okay. Um, they're, if they were creative, they're not being creative anymore. Stress, yelling, um, not sleeping. Physically, they look pretty worn out. Okay. So I think those are kind of, it's pretty, I think it's pretty easy to see when someone's kind of stressed out. And if you, if they're a loved one, you could try to head it off, say, you know, maybe if they're not recognizing it, mm -hmm. you calling it out can help them recognize it. Hey, yeah, maybe you're right. Um, and then maybe give them some suggestions okay. on how to. Breathing is huge. Um, in one of my departments where we've started yoga, okay. which is not the old yoga where you put your leg behind your neck and all that kind of thing. It's mostly breathing. So if people can do the right kind of breathing, it's huge for stress relaxation. And that's where when we tend to breathe, we tend to breathe here, especially under stress. The right kind of breathing is diaphragmatic breathing so that when you breathe in, you're breathing out to get maxima. And when you breathe out, you're breathing in. So in through your nose, out through pursed lips, 
I try to make breathing out a little bit longer. That seems so simple, but it's so important. Um, that is a very huge tip. It's powerful. It, it is. Um, I need to do that more. Yes, as well. in through the nose, out through pursed lips, and bring it, bring it out when you're, and bring it in. So try it right now. Use your belly. Because that's diaphragmatic. Okay. So see, we tend to yeah, use exactly. this. Exactly. <laughs> so practice that because it's, will, it's that's critical, and getting enough rest and it, whatever makes you happy. Like you know, for me, it could be a warm bubble bath or reading a book, um, those kinds of things. Or if you're at work, getting up from a stressful environment and walking around. Um, if you can do nature, it's even better. Uh, but even walking five minutes mm -hmm. will break that stress and will actually be you'll actually be more productive at work, and it helps. So. I and we do that. need to set that time aside for ourselves. Yeah. So did that answer that question? It, it did. It did. And keeping your patients compliant, um, how do you follow and help your patients be compliant, making sure that they do get the proper? Um, it's hard. It's hard. All you can do is you plant a seed. So, and that's one of the things that I'm appreciative of being here because if I can make just one person that's listening to this think, if I can speak to their head and their heart and make one lifestyle change, to have them get a better quality of life, then I've done my job. So, but you can't make them. It's just right. a matter of you can just try to inspire them to make the change themselves, because you know we have choices and life is very, very short. So Absolutely. why would we want to make it shorter? You know why can't you know? And and how would be how would we be if we're not here for our loved ones? So if we want to do all this stuff with the holidays, but if we have a heart attack, we're not here. Then what's up with that? So. We, we need to give ourselves permission to say no. We need to relax, chill it out, um, breathe right. Exercise is huge. I don't know if I mentioned exercise. It affects every cell in the body, too. It makes those endorphins. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be a full hour workout, but anything. What would you recommend? Even anything is better than nothing, okay. but if they could get at least 20 minutes most days of the week of a moderate, mm -hmm. that's what we recommend. Okay. It would be awesome. Um, exercise, rest, eating right, that's huge too. When we get under stress, especially holiday stress, we start eating, we will re sometimes revert to bad habits. And we'll start, you know, hopefully people aren't smoking, it's the worst thing they can do. Mm. Or eating bad foods, very, very bad, so. Well, you've definitely given us some great advice Thank that you. for our viewers. Lorraine, I appreciate you coming in today and sharing all of your wonderful uh, information with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. To learn more about your heart health, visit mclaren.org slash macomb cardiology. this episode again, visit mclaren.org slash McCombblog.